Today, we're gonna do some painting along the California coast. This is Sumeg State Park. It's a gorgeous spot on the ocean in Humboldt County, and it's one of my favorite places to return to. I read Octavia Butler's Parable series back in 2020 and 2021, and the Humboldt coast is such a huge place of refuge and utopian imagining, even if it's short-lived. Every time I return to this area, I find myself daydreaming about what it would be like to share land here with friends, to live and to bloom together, to co-live instead of the individualist expectations we have from our society. I hope to someday be a part of a community like that, but for now, let's paint. I always start by settling into the space and looking. In the past, that was through my phone, but now I prefer to use my view catcher. And it was a rare sunny day on the Humboldt coast. Much like San Francisco, the Humboldt Bay is often covered in a thick marine layer of fog, but this water that is normally steely gray green was instead of an array of greens, blues, and purples. After creating an initial sketch, I started to mix up a bunch of these different colors I was observing, noting how the light changed them ever so slightly. And once I had a general wash of blue, I began to layer darker, more purple moments of shadows and waves while they were changing right before my eyes. These slow moments for me are so important. The ability to build intimacy and to just look at something so far in the distance that often probably gets brushed off by a lot of people who see it. I love the presentness that's required of me every time I paint in plain air. I started blocking out color where the rocks formed, shadows under the water, and added bits of golden brown and purple, and then I shifted to the sky. These subtle pinks and light blues in the atmosphere, adding lots of water on my brush to the mix to have really subtle soft bands of color in the distance. I wanted this layer down first before I start building out the purple and blue-brown layers of the rocks, first laying down a wash of color, looking and observing and seeing if I got the color right, and then remixing the color a little bit more opaquely again for the shadows of the rocks. It's fun mixing these really subtle blues and purples for these distant shadows, and I do that because I know that blue is always going to fade into the background, into the atmosphere. Back to just observing. I talk a lot on here about how my sketchbook is an important place for me in terms of self-compassion, but it's also so wonderful as a place to just sit and be still. Stillness feels like this really incredible thing for us to do. The stillness, the observing. This area looks like a zone where it's just rocks that are simply harshly weathered by the ocean. These rocks are covered in the history of many birds that live here, and it seems mostly lifeless and barren, but it's a source of life for so many plants and creatures, barnacles, oysters, and so much beauty hidden beneath the waves. In moments of quiet like this, I get to do two things. I get to observe, and I also run disk defragmentation on my brain about all of the things that I've been thinking about. With the last video I posted about how I had quit art several times, I realized that I really don't relate to 
or want anything to do with the traditional art world. I find that the way that I was taught to operate wasn't sustainable, and it was full of expectations around luck. I didn't want to make work to fit other people's expectations anymore, to be someone that I wasn't, or to be a perfect version of what school taught me to be. Being out here in nature and observing, I feel so much more free to ask serious questions as to why I thought the way I used to think, how I can think about my art and how I'm sharing it with others in a way that's more accessible, more honest, more real. My partner caught up with me starting another sketch, and this time I was really focusing on getting the color of the water just right. I've painted this area before and even made it into a sticker, but I always get so much more out of observing color from life. I feel more confident to exaggerate what I see with my eyes, all the different bands of purple and green, all the ways these dark areas glimmer in the sun's heat. I think what the art world really does is it convinces people that vulnerability needs to be hidden behind theories, that our stories and our narratives need to be opaque because that's what'll make them palatable. But if I've learned anything from reading incredible novels, like the one I mentioned at the beginning by Octavia Butler, it's through taking the reader, the viewer, on a journey, an emotional ride, full of ups and downs, highs and lows. That's where the magic is. It's not in getting a solo exhibition at a museum. It's not about having your work recognized in art forum. What making art is really about is for us to connect the skills that we've built, our ability to see, and our beautiful imaginations. And to combine all of those ingredients together into something that resonates with and makes other people feel something. My partner often writes instrumental songs that will make me cry. I think that things don't necessarily have to be complicated to make somebody feel something. Maybe the thing that you're feeling or trying to communicate that you feel is awe. Maybe it's excitement or wonder or joy or horror. But these things should make us feel. Gouache is so fluid and fun to push color but have it dry in an instant with the ability to go back in and continue to layer. It was a fun dance painting these waves, the sea foam, and the way the water drips along the rough textures of the rocks and the creatures that have attached to them. Each reflection was changing and dancing right in front of me, so the making of this painting began to feel like a dance. What can I get away with showing? What can I get away with not showing? And there's so much that we can see when we just take the chance to stop and look closely. It's through this looking that we can notice how much is lost in our phones and our need to document without our body. Even if you don't draw, I'd love to challenge you to notice and attempt to describe the colors you see when you witness something beautiful. Spending a few more minutes looking and lingering is a radical act in our fast-paced consumer culture. After watching several rounds of ocean spray on these rocks, I use white gouache to suggest the best moments of the wave crashing along them. The people at the top of the arts food chain that run boards of institutions, they don't want to see us living in collective joy. They want to see us continuing to compete as hyper-individualist people. And that's just not my cup of tea. So I'd rather opt out of that and continue to find joy 
painting by the ocean like this. Lastly, I toned a white with a warm green for the seafoam that was happening in the shadows. When the spread was finally painted, it was time to clean my brushes, pack everything up, and get ready to hike back. Off I go, as excited as I was when I was a little kid, but not without spending a little more time looking at the beauty of this trail. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you wanna see more stuff like this. Definitely subscribe, because I hope to do many more in this style. And stay creative. And until next time, find your own way to persistently bloom.